Hello, good evening and welcome to the last session, the last revision session in this series where we're going to be dealing with the reading and specifically with those questions that are specific to the higher paper. So let's um, let's start by thinking what you need to bear in mind uh, for the higher paper, the reading paper. And just uh, let me do a few little reminders that hopefully will help you. There are some obvious things I could say, like, you know, remember you've got time, so make sure that you use it well and you read it, read the text slowly, pay attention, and trying to think of a few things that I'm going to mention in a minute. Um, Another thing I would I would really um, encourage you to do is to use your highlighters. Okay, highlight a bit the bits that guide you to the to the right answer of each question, um, and underlined, annotate, make you know write whatever you want as long as your answers are clear. Okay, so make sure that your answers are clear. Um, and and it's it's easy to see where the cross is and the, the, you know if any something is has not uh, has been crossed and then crossed out. Um, you know as as long as your answers are clear, you can annotate, you can do whatever you want. Um, another thing that should help you in the reading is thinking of related words. Okay, so if you are struggling to understand a word, think of other words which are related and that you that might guide you towards the uh, meaning of a word so let's let's think of the word of the verb incendiar okay so notice okay incendiar ends in ar so it's going to be a verb so a verb in infinitive so this is going to be to something and if you remember that incendio with an o is a fire Mm, generally a fire, either an intentional fire or an accidental fire. Um, so incendiar will be to set fire to something. Okay, so do think, if I know a word that's got to do with the beginning of the word, check what type of word it is and then try and work out the meaning if you don't know that, you know, that meaning. On this, uh, still on this line, I would say remember remember key endings okay remember key endings what do i mean by this i i mean things like remember some key endings of nouns so if you come across a word that ends in dad or in theon or in eth or thea or etha okay Chances are, they're going to be that word's going to be a noun. Okay, so uh, for example, if I have the word, if I have the word, um, oh, hold on, <laughs> if I have the word suciedad, suciedad, this comes from the adjective sucio. This is dirty. This is uh, ends in that is going to be a noun, so this is going to be dirt or yeah, or dirtiness. Okay. Um, if I have, I don't know, if I have um, another one, madurez, and I know that maduro is mature, and this makes it a noun, so it's going to be maturity. Okay. Now, in addition to this, there are some other um, endings that are also key endings. Which are these? They can be a bit, a bit more complex, but uh, remember that if an adjective, so this was as, as regarding nouns, regarding adjectives, okay, if I look at adjectives, if I have an adjective that ends in ante or in yente, this is going to um, this is going to be the equivalent of an English ac uh, accent adjective ending in ing. Generally speaking, let me give you an example. I've got oh, hold on. I've got disappointing. Okay, disappointing. Now, disappoint to disappoint is decep decepcionar okay 
Decepcionar is to disappoint. So if I want to do the ing, I'm going to do decepcionante with this ante. Okay. Um, I've got an adjective, you know, this works in reverse as well. So if I've got creciente, sorry, creciente, and I think, right, so this comes from the verb crecer, that is to grow. So creciente me will mean growing. Okay. This, um, again, th these things, and uh, you know, it might not work 100% of the time because it could be that in Spanish we've got an adjective that ends in ante or ente, which in English is an end in ing. But most of the time it will help you. And also it helps you to not have to memorize as much vocabulary. Because once you know crecer, okay, once you know crecer, you can work out the meaning of creciente. Or if you, we go back to... Um, to nouns, actually, another another ending I could, I could, um, I could add to, I could add to that is miento. Okay, so if I have the verb crecer, and I read creci miento, so crecer and miento makes it a noun, so that's the growth. Okay, so think of those derivatives. How from one same word, from one same meaning, I can work out other related words. And similar to this, to the ante and yente, we've got ado or ada and ido or ida, which are sort of equivalents to adjectives ending in ed. So here we had decepcionante. If instead of ante I ended with ido, I've got, or ado, sorry, decep decepcionado, disappointed. Okay, so I can, I can make up in a way new words, or I can work out the meaning of words by paying attention to some very common endings. Okay, and the last reminder, pretty easy, um, pretty simple, but of course, remember verb endings. That's going to help you, obviously. And also remember that if you come across words uh, ending in AR, ER or IR, these are going to be infinitives. Infinitives of verbs, so the form that you find in the dictionary, and that sometimes they can only, they can also be used as nouns, okay? Um, I don't know, let me give you an example. Um, I don't know, you could have el, el cantar, the singing, okay? Um, or, I don't know, el ayudar, I don't know, el ayudar a la gente, or it's simply ayudar a la gente, okay? The helping. Okay, so you can you can find sometimes these endings with a, with an l, for example, or yeah, they tend to be masculine, being used as nouns. They are infinitives, but they are used, you know, when when they're used as nouns, they're more the doing, the action. Okay, um, there's there's a there's a classic um, in Spanish which is sorry el sa oh, hold on. el saber no ocupa lugar. El saber no ocupa lugar, which would be like knowing or knowledge doesn't take up space. Okay, so be aware of, of this. ER, IR, AR, infinitives, but sometimes they can be used as, um, as nouns. Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to alert you about is the use of subjunctive, okay, present subjunctive. Uh, we are going to, during today's session, we are going to devote a bit of time to looking at the, at the subjunctive, but make yourself you are familiar with this. You don't have to be 100% accurate, be able to, you know, um, use it perfectly because it can be a bit tricky. But we will go today through some expressions that require um, that require subjunctive, and through how you build the subjunctive, so that if you if you encounter it in your exam, you can um, you know you can work out you realize that it's a subjunctive and you can deal with it pretty well. Okay.
So um, the, the, I'm going to leave it here as far as sort of uh, advice is concerned. We, you know, we will go through a bit more throughout the the session, but I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, but I th and I think you know you're doing higher. You know most of the things that you know I, I could tell you in terms in terms of how oh, make sure you you know make sure you reread the passage, make sure you um, count the points, to count the marks you've done. Of course, you know all of that. Okay, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to bother you with those. So let's have a look at the first question that we are going to look at this session. It's uh, it's called work experience, work experience. And let me start with a little warning. Work experience um, in Spanish is prácticas, practi, prácticas laborales. Oh, prácticas laborales. Okay. A little warning. There is another expression in Spanish which actually sounds a bit more like work experience, but we need to be careful that we don't mix it up because that does not mean work experience. We've got the expression experiencia, experiencia laboral. Okay. Experiencia laboral literally translated would be work experience but what this means is the experience that you have in a job okay your career experience if you're talking about someone who's doing their studies um and 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 they're just spending a bit of time doing you know in, in a particular in a particular job to try it out or whatever that in spanish is prácticas laborales okay so do not get confused so in an, in, in an exercise like this, uh, obviously we are going to uh, we've got a longish piece of um, piece of writing. Uh, let's you know make sure that you read what you need to be doing. So you need to be reading about Paul's work experience, and then you need to put across against four of these eight correct statements. Okay, so cross out four out of the eight things to bear in mind. Okay, useful things to bear in mind is that the info and information will usually appear in order, usually. Okay, don't stick to this too strictly and, um, you know, and turn out that, well, actually, on this occasion, it wasn't. But generally speaking, it will appear in order. Um, what else? Things that, um, okay, be aware of things like distractors things like distractors and remember that sometimes you will come up a, a word but it won't be you know you might co come up come um yeah come across a word that you were sort of anticipating but it might not be in the meaning that you anticipate you know that, that you expected remember that this type of uh, this type of activity would be um would be for a b grade so you know they're not going to be too too mean okay they're not going to be unrealistically mean but at the same time it's for a b okay they you you need to work you know you need to work for it and another thing you need to remember is read the whole text before you start l looking for answers okay so let's have a look at the question itself then so we need to read about paul's work experience and we said then we need to cross out four out of eight so let's have a look what vocabulary we might need, you know, we might come across uh, and what vocabulary we need to be aware of um, for, you know, going up to go, going to leading to the exam. So the first thing I'm going to look is the example. Paul did his work experience in a bank. And why am I going to look at the, at the example? Because it gives me information. OK, it gives me information. I already know to start what the text is, uh, um, is about a bit more. The job was very easy. OK, very easy muy fácil literally translated of course rather than muy fácil we might sorry we might come across something like no era difícil but also we've got other words related to easy difficult we've got words like complicado complicated and we've got words like sencillo or simple which is simple Okay, so remember, also think of, uh, you know, remind yourself of opposites. The work experience was not useful, not useful. So we could come across something like inútil. And also, of course, remember that the opposite 
useful is útil. We've got other expressions like una pérdida de tiempo, a waste of time, to have to, that has to do with usefulness or, or, or lack of usefulness. And remember that the verb would be perder el tiempo. Okay, so una pérdida de tiempo is a waste of time. Perder el tiempo is to waste time. He had to get used to new things. So important things to remember about getting used to. There, the, uh, there are the, um, there is the verb acos, acostumbrarse to, yeah, to get used to something, which comes from the word costumbre like custom, but also synonyms of acostumbrarse, and I'll change color because otherwise you won't see it on the on the black, will be things like habi habituarse, to become, you know, to, 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 yeah, again, to become used to, to make a habit out, out of something, or adaptarse, okay, so get thinking of synonyms, different ways of saying the same thing. He was part of a team, part of a team, super important to remember the word equipo, equipo, team. And there's an expression like formar parte de un equipo, okay? To be part of a team is formar parte de un equipo. Also, possibilities would be things like trabajar trabajar en equipo, to work as a team, okay? E, he learned very little during the two weeks. So, you know, useful to know, remind yourself of the uh, verb aprender, aprender, to learn. And also, you know, to learn little would be aprender poco. But also remember, the, 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 um, I didn't learn much or I hardly learned anything. In Spanish, we could also ex, uh, express it with an, with an idea like um, apenas, apenas aprendí nada. Okay? Apenas aprendí nada. This apenas is hardly hardly so this would be you know i hardly learned anything but be careful because at higher you could come up come across an expression like this okay so apenas aprendí nada it doesn't mean i didn't learn anything at all okay it's not it's it doesn't mean the same as no aprendí nada okay it's not no aprendí nada i didn't learn anything it is i hardly learned anything so you know th this apenas is a really really interesting expression that you know, they could use to try and trick you. Um, in the future, he wants to work in a bank. So important expression, want. So quiere o quiero o querer. Okay. Quiero, quiere, querer. Um, also remember, other than, other than querer, we've got expressions like desearía. I would, I would like to. Me apetece. I feel like, me interesa, and also things like pienso, pienso, trabajar, okay, I am, I am, um, I intend to, okay, I intend to work somewhere, o tengo, tengo la intención, tengo la intención de trabajar. So remember, expressions that that, that show a, a, an intention or a will to do something. The place where he, work, where, where he worked was too small. So, you know, for this we would have pequeño or demasiado pequeño. But also remind yourselves of, of words like tamaño, tamaño, size, or dimensiones, dimensions. Okay, another word of talking about size. And he arrived home tired, so for tired we've got cansado, cansado, and that's that's pretty much all we probably, um, yeah, all, all, all we can probably say about tired. 
Okay, so we would, um, you know, we, we would now make sure that we would read it or, you know, read it once to have the general feel for the text. And then we would go and um, start looking at the question. So we'll go and start looking, sorry, you'll start looking for the answers. So we'll start looking for the answers straight away in this case, just to save a bit of time. But remember, in your case, do go through the whole text once. So um, let's start by finding where the example, where, where the answer to the example is located so that I know that my first answer will be after that, hopefully. So I've got that Paul did with his work experience in a bank. Hice mis prácticas laborales, no, mis prácticas laborales en un banco. So here I've got my answer to the example. So I'll carry on reading. Now let's familiarize, I'm going to familiarize myself with the first, let's say, three, four um, sentences, four, three or four statements that I may have to find. So the job was very easy. The job experience was not useful uh, or had to get used to new things, part of a team. Estuve dos semanas y lo que tenía que hacer, so estuve dos semanas, I was there for two weeks, y lo que tenía que hacer, lo que, remember, what, lo que tenía que hacer, what I had to do, no fue duro, no fue duro. Let's remember, duro is hard. So, no fue duro is the same as saying it was easy, okay, or it was simple. So, the job was very easy. Okay, I'll, I'll do a darker color because otherwise we're not going to see it. En realidad fue muy fácil. Here I've got it spelled out for, my, for me. Y bastante aburrido. Quite boring. Hacer fotocopias, doing photocopies, y llamar a clientes, calling clients. So that, that, it's pretty much quite clear that this is my answer. Para mí, lo más importante, notice again, this lo, okay, lo más importante, the most important thing, lo más importante de esta experiencia, of this experience, fue acostumbrarme, a acostumbrarme, a la disciplina de tener un trabajo. ¿Ok? Recibir órdenes, receive orders. Notice that órdenes is orders, not in the sense of uh, an order or something you buy, ¿ok? Is an order, like, do something. ¿Ok? Is that sort of order. Um, a, 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 something that you buy is not una orden, es un pedido. ¿Ok? Something you ask for. Um, so let's say you, you place an order through, I don't know, through Amazon. We wouldn't call it una orden. We would call that un pedido. Bear that in mind in case there's something about internet shopping or something like that. So let's go back to this. Um, fue la, lo más importante fue acostumbrarme a la disciplina, to get used to the discipline of having a job. Recibir órdenes y llevarme bien con un grupo nuevo de gente. Llevarme bien, llevarme bien, to get on well. To get on well. Remember, the opposite is llevarme mal. Okay, to get on badly or not to get on. Con un grupo nuevo de gente, with a new group of people. Y formar parte, to be part, de un equipo, of a team. So, what have we got here? We've got getting used to new things. That is one. And remember that we anticipated the, the verb acostumbrarse. And also being part of a team. Okay, so we've got two in one same sentence. So we've got three um, three answers already. That doesn't mean we we right. We would need to then you know wait until the end to double check, and let's continue reading. But first of all, let's familiarize ourselves again with the um, with the last four uh, statements. So we need to find that he learned very little during the two weeks, or that in the future he wants to work in a bank, or that the place was too small, or that he arrived home tired. So, he aprendido mucho. Ha aprendido mucho. I have learned a lot. So this one is not going to be right. En estas dos semanas, aunque, although, no sé si en el futuro quisiera tener un empleo como este. Okay? No sé si en el futuro quisiera tener un empleo como este. Okay? So, in the future, I would like to have a job like this. Okay? Is he saying that in the future he wants to work in a bank? It does seem so, but do go back in the sentence. And key information is here. 
no sé si. No is no or I don't. Sé, okay? So it's I don't know. And this C is if, okay? So I don't know if in the future I would like to have a job like this. So here is a, one of those little distractors, is one of those little traps where they are writing quisiera tener un empleo como este so that you might think I would like to, to have a job like this, but actually the key information is here, okay? I don't know if. So does he want to have work in a bank? Mm, no, I can't cross it. Okay, he's saying he does not know, so that is not correct. No me gustaba ir a Madrid cada día. I didn't like going to Madrid every day. Había más de 3.000 empleados. Remember this verb, había, there were more than 3,000 workers. And remember your big figures, your big numbers, 3.000, okay? Remember the meals, 3,000, 3,000.000. 4,000. Also, remember the cientos. Okay? 200, 300, 500. Okay? The hundreds. In el edificio, in the building where I worked. Y, y, y llegaba muy cansado a mi casa. And I arrived very tired to my home. I arrived home very tired. So, the last correct answer is going to be H. Okay, so this is, you know, hopefully it is okay. Hopefully it's relatively straightforward, um, but, you know, worth practicing it. Just let me remind you of a, few, of a few more items of vocabulary related to jobs, work and jobs that, you know, might be useful to, yeah, to remember. That we use expression expressions like mis supe... Mis superiores, who are the people who work above me, who've got, a, you know, a, a, a more responsibility than me. We've got words like jefe, boss. Also, remember words like sueldo, salary, or salario. We can, we, we can, oh, sorry, not salaria, salario. We, we, we you, do use salario sometimes, but sueldo is maybe a lessy, a less cognate word, so be aware of this one. Also words like media or expressions like media, jornada, half a day, when you work half a day, or jornada, jornada completa, when you work full time, full whole day. Verbs like cobrar, to get paid, or pagar, to pay. Also remember the word ascenso, ascenso, um, which is a promotion. Also, if you're talking about how you may get to a job, we can talk about las cualificaciones, las cualificaciones. Remember, we, we mentioned experiencia profesional. And also remember the words like carrera. In itself, alone, it will usually mean university studies, but if you read carrera profesional, that is your career, okay? So be careful with whether something follows carrera or, or doesn't. Still in the, in the field of uh, university, remember that your, um, your certificates are titulos, literally like titles. And also remember a verb like desarrollar, to develop, okay? Don't forget this. And of course, coming from desarrollar to develop, we've also got the, um, the noun desarrollo, development. Okay? So, that's it for this question. Um, I hope this revision on sort of jobs is useful. Give me a couple of seconds, change question, and I'll be straight back with a new question. In this case, a pretty tricky one, one of our A grade questions. Okay? I'll be back in a second. So we are back with uh, question four. Question four. Questions four are though, uh, typically those questions where you've got a long test, pretty long, 
and you've got questions where you have to write your own answers. There's no multiple choice, you have to write your own answers. So what things are important to bear in mind in this type of question? First of all, make sure, that, of course, make sure that you read the text carefully and so on, make sure that you read the questions, we know that. But when you answer the questions, okay, answer, um, I would say answer fully, not necessarily not necessarily in sentences. It does not matter if you don't write in sentences. And I would say don't give unnecessary, unnecessary information. So read, read carefully what you need in the question, what information you need to provide, provide that information and that is it. As it happens in most type of questions, the information will appear, uh, the information appears in order, okay? So if, the, if the, in the, the information in the text will be in the same order as the information in the questions is asked for. So don't, you know, just follow that. And again, you know, it's going to be quite, quite um, important that you highlight and, and make notes of where you find, you find the answers, okay? Um, so we are going to start by looking at what type of question it is, what information are they giving us, what information do they want. So let's look at the text. The text is called Going to University. So, you know, that's what it's going to, going to be about studies, university and so on. And if I read, uh, uh, if I read this bit, okay, which mm, some people might forget to because, you know, you read the title and then you go for the text. No, have a look. Sometimes it contains important information. So it says, read the following advice. Okay, so this text is not a letter, it's not an email, it's not a novel, it's advice. Why is it important that I know or that I realise that it's advice? Well, it is important because I am going to be anticipating certain things. And that's something I wanted to <clears throat> talk to you about regarding this question. So if someone is giving advice, let's think, if someone is giving me advice, they're going to be using certain constructions. What do I mean by this? So firstly, they are going to be using things like, for example, um, they're going to be telling me what I must, what I should, what I could, etc. do. Okay. And what is that in Spanish? Okay. So in Spanish, this means that I'm going to find things like, for example, puedes, you can, or podrías, you could, or debes, you, sh uh, yeah, you must, Debe deberías, you should, Necesitas, you need. Necesitarías. Notice that I'm using them all in the you singular form, just because I'm sort of thinking that if someone is giving me direct advice, this is the form they're going to be using. Of course, also remind yourself on things like puedo, I can, podría, I could, etc. Other things like uh, tienes, tienes que, you have to, or tendrías que, you would have to, things like hazte, also you have to, hay que, someone must or it, something must be done. So yes, remind yourself of these modals, okay, modal verbs that really can change the meaning of a sentence quite, quite dramatically. Okay, it's not the same to say uh, necesitas estudiar, you need to study, than to say puedes estudiar, you can study. And when we are talking at this level, when we're talking about A or A star grade, these sort of differences do, you know, can become really important. So the first thing you need to revise, make sure that you're in tune with are these modal verbs. Next thing that I, we need to look at are or, or think that I'm going to probably look at, you know, I'm going, going to probably read things like um, what is important, what is important, essential, okay, 
etc. It was important, essential that I do. And that's where we come across the importantissimo, <laughs> the super important, sur, no, not subject, what have I written here? Subjunctive, okay, the present subjunctive. What is the present subjunctive? The present subjunctive is a form of present. Okay, if you if you put it into if you translate a present subjunctive into Spanish, chances are you're going to be using um, normal present. But present subjunctive is the form of what's hypothetical, hypothetical things that may or may not happen, and it's usually it it usually expresses the idea that somebody does something. Okay, so I'll give you an an, uh, 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 an example. It is important it is important that you study okay i think that it is important that you study in spanish this you study is going to be in present subjunctive so this would be es importante es importante que and then i'm going to put this in present subjunctive es tu Estudies. And this is the ending of the U form of the present subjunctive. So let's have a quick look at the endings of the present subjunctive. What are they? Which are they? The endings of the present subjunctive, other than in the I form, the rest are the same as, the, as in the present indicative, what you might call the normal present, but swapped round. Okay? So for AR verbs, if for example I've got the verb bailar, Let's remember, I dance is bailo. That's the only exception in the present subjunctive. It doesn't just take the ER endings because then it would be the same. So for the AR verbs, if in the present indicative I say bailo, bailo, in the present subjunctive it's baile. And for the ER or IR verbs, if for example I have the verb comer, remember the present indicative was como, the present subjunctive would be will be comma okay from here they just swap endings so ar are going to take the present the, the endings of the er in the in the indicative and er and ir are going to take the ar endings okay so i've got here that i dance is baile that you dance is bailes that he or she dances is baile that we dance is bailemos, that you guys dance is bailes, and that they dance is bailen. And then with the, uh, with the ER or IR verbs, this work, they, they share the endings. So that I eat is coma, that you eat is comas, that he or she eats is coma, that we eat comamos, that you guys eat comais, that they eat coman. Okay, so hopefully the endings won't sort of um, uh, won't prove too complicated. Generally speaking, it's not the difficult thing to understand these endings, with the exception of the, the uh, uh, yeah. I would say the only the only place where the only case where you might find a few problems is with a few irregular subjunctives, and the main ones are things like sea that I am or that he or she is. Baya, that I go or that uh, he or she goes. And um, probably things like uh, sea, vaya, aga, that I do or that he or she does. And aya, that there is or that he or she, uh, so yeah, that, that there is actually, yeah, I can't say <laughs> that, that I, I use, okay? So sea, vaya, aya, sorry, sea, vaya, aga, aya, okay? Do um, do bear this in mind, and also maybe it's also um, benga. Okay, it, I know it's not irregular, but sometimes it catches people unaware that that I come or that he or she comes. Okay, so subjunctive important to bear, bear it in mind, and let's have a look now at what sort of expressions, what sort of ideas are followed by subjunctive, which I think is the really important bit here. The first case where you will find subjunctive is to express wishes, wishes, 
advice, advice and requests. Okay, wishes, advice, requests. And this is exactly, this is precisely what we find in this question. So, verbs like things like quiero, I want, espero, I hope. These would be the typical things to express wishes or things like deseo, I desire. And then it would fo be followed by que and then a verb in present subjunctive. So, for example, quiero que vengas. I want you, quiero que vengas aquí. I want you to come here. Okay. And advice, to express advice, we would, you, we would use things like aconsejo, aconsejo que, o te aconsejo que, I advise, I advise you to. So, te aconsejo que estudies. So important to get in tune with this verb, aconsejar, to advise, okay? Or sugiero, sugiero, I suggest, and we, which could appear in, in this type of text, okay? Another case where we use subjunctive is to express doubts, okay? Doubts, possibilities, yeah, doubts and possibilities. So things like es posible. Okay, es posible que, es probable que, it is possible that, it is likely that, es necesario, it is ne es necesario que, it is necessary that, es imprescindible, it's essential that, es imposible, it's impossible that. Also things like uh, no estoy no estoy seguro no estoy seguro de que I am not sure that you know for example no estoy seguro de que llegue a tiempo I'm not sure I will arrive on time and then other expressions like quizá maybe or tal vez another way of saying maybe or perhaps. Other expressions that require or may require subjunctive are things to express, expressions to express purpose. Okay, so what for? So things like para que, so that, a fin, a fin de que. Okay, again, so that, con el objeto, sorry, con el objeto. De que, all of them meaning so that, with the intention of, with the purpose of, okay? Another, another case where we may use subjunctive is to express things like sorrow, okay? Sorrow, emotion, sorrow, anger, things like siento, siento que, siento que, I don't know, siento que llegarás tarde, I'm sorry you were late, tengo miedo de... Tengo miedo, I am scared, I am afraid. Tengo miedo de que, I am, I am afraid of something happening. Temo que, I fear something happening. Me alegro, yeah, we, we said emotions in general. Me alegro de que, I am happy that something happened, okay? Another case, which is quite likely you could come across it, is the expression cuando plus a future event. So, for example, in this case, if someone said, when I go to university, and this is in future, okay, so it would be cuando vaya a la universidad. Okay, so if this cuando goes followed by an event which is in the future, you're going to have to use it in the present subjunctive, okay? And the last case we're going to look at is the um, when it follows things like alguien, alguien que, somebody who, or algo que, something that. So, for example, a sentence like busco a alguien, busco a alguien que, I don't know, que sepa... Cantar. 
Busco a alguien que sepa cantar. I am looking... Oh, by the way, I've just, I've just come across... I've just reminded myself of another irregular uh, subjunctive. Busco a alguien que sepa cantar. I am looking for someone who knows how to sing. This person might or might not exist. This means I haven't got anyone in mind. I'm not thinking of a particular person who knows how to sing. I'm looking for anyone who knows how to sing. So this sepa is from the verb saber, to know. Okay, so this is another irregular subjunctive. So these six cases, you don't have to memorize them all, okay, but be in tune with these sort of expressions that are followed by subjunctive so that it doesn't catch you by surprise. Okay, so having said all this, let's go now and have a look at the text. So let's have a look at the questions, what type of questions we need to answer. So what should you bear in mind when you consider going to university? So what should you bear in mind? And notice this is for one mark, so there's going to be just one question. What information should you gather before applying to university? Okay, and this is two marks and they tell us here very helpfully that you need to mention two ideas. Oh, hold on. I'm dropping my papers. Um, okay, so... Okay, so two things that we need. Fine. What will a good application form enable you, you to do? Now, good application form. So we're talking about application forms. Remember, application form in Spanish is formulario formulario de solicitud, okay, just in case, I, it will probably not appear in the text, but just, you know, while we're at it, let's, let's remind, let's remind ourselves, and also this verb enable, enable someone to do something, will be permitir, okay, so to enable, we, we use, probably, we tend to use the verb to permit, to permitir, okay, why do universities interview future students? Okay, so remember to interview is entrevistar and the word for interview is una entrevista. How can you make an informed choice of university? Okay, so mention two ideas. And in what way do all students have equal opportunities? Okay, equal opportunities. In Spanish, igualdad, igualdad de oportunidades. Okay, so it's important that you read the questions and that you start having a bit of a of a guess of what the answers could be, but don't just don't just guess. Don't read the text based on your preconceptions of what the answers are going to be. Okay, but important that you understand well the questions and that you know what sort of thing you're going to um, to, to expect. So then you would read the whole text once, which we're not going to do, but you would read the whole text once before you start answering any questions. And then on the second reading, you would start looking for the answers. So what should you bear in mind when you consider going to university? Let's start reading. Es muy importante que hables. Notice here. Okay, what we, what we did we just say. Es muy importante que. It's very important that. And we've got a little, pretty little subjunctive. Hables. Es muy importante que hables regularmente con tu familia sobre los estudios superiores. It is very important that you speak regularly with your family about los estudios superiores. What are these? Estudios superiores. Literally, higher, higher studies. Okay, higher studies, higher education, um, yeah, university. All the words in Spanish that you might you might encounter for um, for for estudios superiores are things like carrera, okay, this is a university study, grado, which is a degree. Things like curso universitario, curso universitario, okay. So it's important that you speak regularly with your family about the. Uh, higher studies, que te gustaría seguir en el futuro, that you would like, notice it's a conditional, to follow, seguir, to follow, en el futuro, in the future, ya que nunca es demasiado pronto, it's never too early, para prepararse, para ir a la universidad, to prepare to go to university. So what should you bear in mind? Um, so your answer would be, mm, okay, you need to speak 
speak regularly to your family okay or it could also be it's never too soon okay what information should you gather before applying to university so primero first debes hacer una lista a list de cuáles son tus habilidades okay habilidades these are not habilidades not ability it's skill Okay, notice that the word for ability is more things like capacidad. Okay, so what are your skills? Los títulos, notice, super important word, títulos, certificate, que ya tienes, which you already have. Y tus metas, another important word, meta, goal. Okay. Por supuesto, también es muy importante incluir otras cosas como el voluntariado, volunteering, que hayas hecho, notice, volunteering that you have done, another subjunctive, y las actividades que practicas en tu tiempo de ocio, the activities that you, that you do in your, notice how they use here, tiempo de ocio, free time, they haven't used tiempo libre, okay, this is leisure time, meaning the same, but they've gone for this expression, ocio, which may be a little bit more challenging than tiempo libre. So, what information should you gather? Mention two, so um, so you need to make a list of your skills, certificates, certificates or goals, okay? Skills, certificates or goals. What will a good application enable you to do? Okay, cuando ya tengas toda esta información, when, once you've got a notice here, tengas, yeah, what we said about the cuando, when you have, when you already have this information, because this is something that's going to happen in the future, so this got subjunctive, toda esta información podrás preparar una solicitud impresionante, impressive, que te va a ayudar, help, a acceder a los centros universitarios más prestigiosos, acceder to access a los centros universitarios, university centers más prestigiosos more, more or most prestigious so, to access the most prestigious universities ok Why do, you need, why do universities interview future students? So let's um, carry on reading. Recuerda, remember, también, que algunas universidades entrevistan, we've got here the word entrevistan, a sus futuros estudiantes, ya que, ya que, same as porque, hoy en día, nowadays, hay más solicitantes, more um, applicants, que plazas. Plazas, I know it's the... It's the um, is the name for square, but it's also the, word, the, the name for uh, the word for a place. Y la competencia and the um, sort of the, what do you call it, Com the, um, ah, I've, I've lost the word, the, the rivalry or the, yeah, is very intense. So, why do universities interview future students? Because there are more applicants than spaces, okay? And notice here, solicitante, it's probably, it's probably one of those a word that you may not have come across before, but it's, it comes from the verb solicitar, or from the word, same word as solicitud, so it's applica it, it comes from the word to application, um, and in this case it's applicant. If you said because there are more applications than spaces, that's absolutely fine as well, nobody would, would have an issue with that. Okay. So next question, how can you make an informed choice of university? And I have to mention two ideas. So let's carry on reading. Todos saben que, everyone knows that, elegir to choose la universidad ideal no es nada fácil. Okay, we know that from the question. Okay, Pero por eso te sugerimos, notice the verb sugerir that I mentioned before, que leas, subjunctive, artículos sobre el mundo universitario. So we suggest to you, we propose, that you read articles about the university world, okay? En revistas y periódicos, in magazines and newspapers, two quite important words that tend to come up. 
¿ok? Y que visites and that you visit varias universidades, several universities, si puedes, if you can. Y que hables and that you speak con los catedráticos, catedráticos, professors, y los estudiantes and students, ¿ok? So we've got three possible answers out of which two uh, would do. So um, what can you do? Read articles in uh, um, magazines and newspapers, uh, visit, visit universities and speak to professors and students. Okay, so two of these three would do. And then in F, what way do all students have equal opportunities? In what way do all have uh, equal opportunities? So we read en este momento, at this time, un buen número de estudiantes. Notice how they haven't chosen muchos estudiantes, but un buen número, a good number, meaning same as muchos, many. Está preocupado, uh, worried, por el alto precio, the high price, de las matrículas. Notice this word matrícula can be a registration plate in a car or the, um, what you call it, what the, the price of the how you call it when when you um, when you pay for a course mm, I don't know uh, I, I'll, I'll call it the price of the course because right now I can't come up with the with the word but you know what I, what I mean yeah the the what, what you pay when you register for a course so está preocupado por el alto precio de las matrículas y decide no ir a la universidad and they decide not to go to university sin embargo however hay que recordar, we must remember, and notice this hay que, one must, ¿ok? Hay que recordar, one must remember, que muchos estudiantes reciben ayuda. Many students receive help para pagar sus estudios, to pay their studies, um, the university studies. Hay muchos tipos de becas, ¿ok? So, beca is a grant. If you, if you don't know this word, which is quite possible, just think, ayudas para pagar, help to pay, that's... A grant, okay? So read around words that you don't know because they might give you the information anyway, especially with those words that they know people are very likely not to know, okay? Por eso no tienes que renunciar a ninguna un universidad solamente porque el curso sea demasiado caro. So you don't have to, um, to, um, to, uh, what's it called? You don't have to um, renounce, you don't have to, yeah, to accept not to go to a, a particular university only because the course is too expensive. And notice this sea in subjunctive, okay? So this means it's not necessarily that the course is too expensive, but that the course may be too expensive. Remember the hypothetical. Lo más importante es que sea el curso más apropiado para ti. The most important thing is that it is more subjunctive the most suitable course for you. So what, in what way do they have equal opportunities? Okay, through grants, or you could call it financial, financial help. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. I hope all, all the, that, that I've told you about the subjunctive uh, also makes sense. And please do revise those expressions, okay? Because look at how many different instances of subjunctives we've we've come across, and how me, how much of the of the vocabulary that we'd anticipated because we thought of the subjunctives or we thought of the modals, we are you know we we are quite happy with and we can understand because of that. Okay, so do revise that, and uh, yeah, and just you know remember the few things that, um, you know, that, that I've told you for, for this question, okay? Key to this question, just relax and try and answer, you know, what you understand. And you will probably be right, okay? So, a uh, little quick, uh, quick little pause, change, um, change uh, canvas, and we're back with another be great question. So, it's not going to be as sort of, um, you know, as, as sort of tricky, challenging, as uh, and long as this one, okay? See you in a second. Okay, and we are back with a new question. And as you may have realized in these few seconds um, of the change of canvas, I've made an executive decision and I've decided, you know what, 
I said we would go for an easier question for a B grade question, but no, actually, we're going to go for a most favorite A star question. I've realized it's basically eight o'clock. We've been an hour um, and I don't want to just go on and on and on. We're going to do this question, which is probably one of, again, one of the most difficult ones. And then I will let you go and continue with your with your, with your revision. OK, I don't want the session to um, to get too, too long. So. This is a question on dream hotels. This is a uh, question eight. And what this means is that we've got a, again, pretty long text and we've got questions. The questions are worth eight marks. So there are eight questions. And, um, and basically the different, you know, one of the important things is that the questions are in Spanish. OK, the question as well as the, as the text are in Spanish. So this means that we've got more to understand because just understanding the text is not enough. I also have to understand well the questions so that I can answer them. So things to bear in mind, as is the case, uh, I'll just write down here for a second, as it's the case with, um, you know, with most, most questions, again, remember that the info appears, appears in order, okay, so there shouldn't really be any surprises, but remember there could be, there could be summary summary questions and what do i mean by this i mean questions where it's just this asking you like what type of article is it like for example if we look at the at the example okay the example is este artículo es sobre los hoteles del futuro de ahora o más famosos this article is about the hotels of the future of today or of now or most famous and the answer is del futuro and if you look in the text, you, you, you would struggle to find somewhere where you say here, it says it's the hotels of the future. It's just in general, after having read the text, you sort of realize, you know, you sort of know that that is that is the case. OK, so so be a, be careful with these type of questions. OK, um, where you don't find the answer in, in one in one specific place. Now, the other thing it's important with this is that understanding understanding the question is almost more important than understanding the text, okay? Of course, understanding the text is super important, but if you understand the text really well and then can't understand the question, you won't be able to answer the questions, okay? Well, if you understand the questions well and you struggle a bit with the text, some of the questions, okay, some, especially, especially in this case, some questions are a bit of common sense, okay? I'm not saying it's going to happen every time. I'm not saying every single question, but some of the questions, it, it, it doesn't really take, if you understand them well, it doesn't really take a lot to answer them, okay? So, do focus a lot in understanding those questions really, really, really well. OK. And also, if you understand the questions, the questions are pointing, uh, uh, pointing or, or, or signposting the way for understanding the, the text. OK, so the questions sort of summarize in simpler vocabulary in simpler language than the text, what the text is about. So if you understand them well, then there are there's more chances that you will understand the, the text well. OK, so let's have a look at the text and the, ti the title is so the, we said the title is Dream Hotels. OK, Dream Hotels, which in Spanish would be, I don't know, something like um, hoteles Hoteles de Ensueño, OK? And we've got here, read this article about Dream Hotel. So notice this is an article, OK? As we said before, advice, no, this is an article. So this is going to tell you what things are like. And in, you know, and in this case, because I've already looked at this example question, I know that he's going to tell me about the hotels of the future. 
So therefore, if it's going to tell me about hotels of the future, I will be sort of aware that there will be verbs in the simple future. Things like, I don't know, habrá, será, okay? Also things could be things like va a ser the, um, the, the near future, okay? So there, there should be, there might be quite a bit of, of future tense. So let's have a look at the questions. So the first one we've already looked at. Los hoteles tienen que cambiar porque. The hotels tienen que, they must, they must cambiar, change. Remember, cambiar to change. Cambio, change. It can be both monetary or, um, you know, or just a change. Porque, because la gente, remember, gente, people, viaja más, travel more, por negocios, negocios, business, okay? So, hotels must change because people travel more for business. Cada vez, cada vez hay más turistas. Cada vez hay más turistas. Notice this expression. Cada vez más means more and more, okay? So, cada vez hay más turistas. There, there are more and more tourists. And los empresarios, notice empresarios, business owners, tienen que trabajar más. The business owners or the entrepreneurs have to work more. So why do hotels need to change? That's going to be the, um, the question, okay? En el futuro, los hoteles serán. In the future, hotels serán, will be. Parecidos a los pisos. Notice parecidos, similar. In Spanish, we also have the word similar, okay? Or in this case, it would be similares. But notice that they've, they've chosen the non-cognate. A los pisos, flats. Mejores que las casas. Better than houses. Iguales a nuestros hogares. The same as our hogar homes, okay? Hogar is the word for home. Notice that the word hogar comes from the same wor word as Fuego, okay, because that the, the hogar, the, the home is where the fire, where the home fire was. So they, this F, oh yeah, this, this F has turned into a H in hogar, but it, they come from the same word. Um, let's have a look at the next question. Es muy importante que el hotel del futuro, it is very important that the hotel of the future, and if you remember what, I, what we said earlier, notice here, es muy importante que... So this is going to be in subjunctive, okay? So tenga, that it has, habitaciones para los gerentes, rooms for the gerentes, managers. Tricky word, managers. Ofrezca, offers, servicios de informática, um, computer services. Sepa los gustos del cliente, knows the client's taste, gusto, taste. Okay, and, and notice this sepa that knows that we saw we saw as, a, as an irregular subjunctive. Los hoteleros tendrán que, uh, hotel owners will have to, hablar con los clientes, speak to the clients, escoger a los clientes, to choose the clients. Notice, escoger is the same as elegir, to choose. Entretener a los clientes, entertain the clients. Se podrá saber, se podrá saber, notice this se podrá is an impersonal, one will be able to know, quite tricky construction to be honest, cómo se siente el huésped, how the um, guest, huésped, guest, so how the, uh, how the guest is feeling, so this is a reflexive, one will be, will be able to know how the guest is feeling through or via or thanks to el corazón, heart, el cuerpo, the body, la cara, the face. Okay, this is probably one of the trickier questions here. Okay, en el futuro el servicio será in the future, the service will be más complicado, more complicated. Remember, complicado, same as difícil. Más lento, slower, o más eficaz, more efficient. Okay? You can probably work it out, you know, in this case. Hmm. And 
Then we've got two more questions. Este nuevo, este nuevo servicio, this new service, estará disponible. Notice, this is a bit of a false friend. It's got nothing to do with disposable or anything like that. This disponible is available. Okay, available. Um, will be available los fines de semana, at weekends, 24 horas al día, 24 hours a day, o durante el día, during the day. And then los cambios en los hoteles son the changes in hotels are inevitables, unavoidable, imposibles, impossible, o innecesarios, unnecessary. Now, again, this question, if you understand the question, you can probably pretty, pretty much answer it. Um, from just from what the questions are really just from reading the questions and getting the the gist of what the text is going to be about you can probably work out what the answer is going to be okay so as you can see there is a couple of questions that i pretty much would be able to answer um and the others i will then you know double check or, or, or you know check and, and answer while i'm while i'm reading okay so let's start having a look at the text itself and looking for the answers to the questions so, los hoteles tienen que cambiar. So, why do hotels need to change? Let's start reading and let's make sure that... Um, yeah, let's start reading. So, los continuos viajes de los trabajadores de hoy obligarán a los hoteles a cambiar. We've got here cambiar to change. Y tener aún más comodidades. Okay, so, los continuos viajes, the constant or continued trips de los trabajadores, of the workers, de hoy, of today, obligarán, this is will make it compulsory, okay, like obligatory, a los hoteles a cambiar. So what is going to, why do they have to change? Because people travel more, okay, los continuos viajes, the constant trips. Let's have a look at the second question. En el futuro los hoteles serán. So what are the hotels going to be like? So let's carry on reading. Y tener aún más comodidades. Comodidades. Remember this word. It comes from the word cómodo. Cómodo. Comfortable. Comodidad. That. Another one of those of those um, word endings that turn something into a noun. So cómodo is comfortable. Comodidad is a comfort. So, um, tener aún más comodidades de las que disfrutamos of those of the ones we enjoy en nuestro hogar. So, they will make it compulsory to have even more comforts than the ones we have at home. So, what are the future hotels need to be? Parecidos a los similar to flats? Not quite. Better than houses okay not the same as our homes because that's not enough they have to be better than our homes let's have a look at question three so it's important that the hotel of the future has uh, is is what so para hacer estos cambios in order to do these changes los hoteles del futuro tendrán que complacer la individualidad de cada huésped Okay, so los hoteles del futuro tendrán que, they will have to, complacer, complacer, this is to please, okay, to please or to satisfy, it's the same as satisfa oh, satisfacer, okay, to please, to satisfy the individuality of each guest, and notice we've got the word guest again. Okay, so it's very important that they know the tastes of the client. Talking about whispered guest, remember the word anfi oh, anfitrion. Ah, I'm having a nightmare here. Anfitrion, which is the host. Okay, anfitrion. Not very common word, but sometimes you get not very common words in these papers. So, los hoteleros tendrán que, the hotel owners will have to, do what? Let's have a look, let's continue reading. Los hoteleros deberán, they will have to, they, they, yeah, they, yeah, they will have to, comunicarse con el cliente, to communicate with the client. So, they will have to speak to the client. 
se podrá saber cómo se siente el huésped. So how are you going to know the, how the guest is feeling, okay? So they need to communicate with the client con el objeto de, with the intention of, or with the purpose of, personalizar todo lo que prefiere en su habitación. To personalize everything that the person prefers in their bedroom. El tipo de almohada, pillow, la iluminación, lighting, la música, music. Okay, so far we haven't got any information here for question five. Estas nuevas habitaciones sabrán incluso, incluso, even, so these new, new rooms um, will even know si el cliente, if the client está de buen humor, if the client or the customer is in a good mood, remember, buen humor, good mood, mal humor, bad mood, a través de, through, sus rasgos faciales, rasgos faciales. Facial features, okay? Facial features. So they will know through the face. And notice how they haven't used the word cara, okay? They've used facial, which is the adjective that relates to anything that's got to do with face. Um, so you might, you know, if you're after cognates, you might get it, but if you're looking for cara, you might not, okay? Now, question six. En el futuro, el servicio será qué? So, what's the service going to be like in the future? So, para satisfacer las necesidades de cada huésped, to satisfy the needs of each uh, guest, habrá un nuevo servicio. There will be a new service. Okay, so we've got it here, nuevo servicio. Que será más efectivo? It will be more effective. Now, efectivo and eficaz are basically, in this context, they are synonyms, so you've got it there. Este nuevo servicio, and, and when is this service going to be available? Okay, so el personal tradicional, the traditional personal, notice this is not personal, this is the word for staff, so traditional staff desaparecerá, will disappear, y en su lugar, and in its place, habrá un robot programado para hacer todo lo necesario. There will be a robot programmed to do everything that is necessary. Notice this law, okay? What is necessary, everything that is necessary. Que se quedará, which will stay en la habitación, in the bedroom, durante todo el tiempo de su estancia. Okay? Durante todo el tiempo de su estancia. So, when is this going to be available? 24 hours a day, okay, all the time during your stay. And then the last one, the changes are what? Inevitable, impossible or unnecessary. Let's have a look. Um, so, in este momento, in this moment or at this time, es difícil imaginar, it is difficult to imagine, que dentro de pocos años, in a few years' time, notice this dentro de, literally inside of few years, in a few years' time, estos cambios puedan ser una realidad. So it's difficult now to imagine that in some years' time these changes will be a reality. Pero no cabe duda, there's no doubt, de que la tecnología avanza, technology is advancing, y los hoteles del, del futuro ofrecerán una estancia inolvidable y sin estrés. So technology is advancing and future hotels will offer an unforgettable and stress-free stay. So, changes in hotels are what? So they're going to be inevitable because technology is advancing, okay? So technology is advancing, so with the advance of technology, it, it becomes inevitable, okay? So, a pretty complicated question, okay? Especially because of how, how Spanish intense it is, and it's it's the last one in the paper, so you arrive there probably tired, a bit, you probably have had enough by the time you get here, and then you're hit with this. Remember also a possibility is to do question eight, the first one, while you're the freshest, okay? Up to you, but remember you don't have to do them in the order that they're in the paper, okay? So please, please, please have a look at complex expressions, practice working meanings out, Practice working, um, you know, working out what words that you don't know what they might mean with, when they're in sentences, okay? And you will do really well. So just 
give it a little last push, do a little bit more revision, relax, and just remember, you've, you know, you've been learning for two years, so now it's just the time to show what you know, okay? Very, very, thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you very much for attending these revision sessions. And uh, yeah, hopefully see you soon.